In this problem, we have a simple spinning disk, and I'm interested in getting the centripetal acceleration at the perimeter, and I also threw in a question about the tangential speed at the perimeter. Okay, and the radius of this is 10 centimeters, which I already put in the diagram as 0.1 meters, and then I showed the tangential velocity vector there. So what I'm going to do first, because it's instructive, is look at our formula for centripetal acceleration. It's V squared over R. And then I'm going to rephrase this in terms of the period and then actually compute it using period instead of the speed. And then we'll come back and check it a second way at the end. So <clears throat> what is my speed? That's the distance this little spot travels divided by the time it takes. And since it covers one circumference of distance every period, I can write in circumference, 2 pi r, as distance, over the time it takes, capital T, the period. And then we'll divide by r. When I square that, I end up with 4 pi squared, r squared over t squared, all divided by r. And that's 4 pi squared, Let's see, one of the r's is going to cancel, and the t squared survives in the denominator. And I have a useful new formula for the centripetal acceleration. So sometimes this will save you some work if you remember it. So let's look at the period. That's the time per rotation. And what I have here is 800 rotations per minute. So it takes one minute of time for every 800 rotations. So I can just handle this with unit analysis. There's 60 seconds in every minute. And if I cancel the minutes, I'm left with seconds per rotation, which is exactly what period is. So 60 over 800 is 0 0.075 seconds per rotation. So the, the rotation is not officially a unit on the period. It's just the time. And it's understood to be time per rotations. Plugging into our new centripetal acceleration formula, I get 4 pi squared times 0.1 meters, all divided by 0 0.075 seconds, all squared. And you can see there that the units are meters per second squared, as they should be. And I end up with about 702 meters per second squared. Okay, let's get to this tangential speed thing. We have a little formula that V is equal to R omega, where omega is the angular velocity measured in radians per second. So I'm gonna have to find omega first. Again, I'll go back to my rotation rate and just manipulate it the way I need to um, with unit analysis. So I have rotations per minute, but I wanna change to radians per second. So I'm gonna put the rotations on top. 800 rotations per minute, one minute for every 60 seconds, and finally 2 pi radians for every rotation, and I'll get an approximation on that. That's 83.8, I'm just keeping three sig figs here, 83.8 radians Per second and you may remember that radians are also technically unitless so you could express this as seconds to the negative one if you wanted but I like to keep the radians around to remind me what Omega really means and then I can get my tangential speed that's R Omega that's 0.1 meters multiplied by 83.8 radians per second and here it's useful to remember that the radians are not officially a unit so I'm left with meters per second. Um, I should be more precise and say like radians are actually unitless. And oh, I didn't need a calculator for that. It gives me 8.38 meters per second at the edge of the disk. Finally, I wanted to do a check on our work by going back to the original centripetal acceleration formula and saying, okay, it's V squared over R and now I know what V is. So I have 8.38 meters per second, all squared. 
divided by the radius of the disk. The units in the numerator are meters squared over seconds squared. And then if I divide one factor of meters out of that, I get meters per second squared. So that's good. And I get 702-ish meters per second squared, which agrees with my first answer.